Hey everybody, welcome back to another video with Bassett and More Outdoors. I'm Justin, and today, if you couldn't tell by the description, we're going to be talking about the Quiet Cat e-bike. Um, this bike is the Predator. Um, now, I wanted to start out this video by letting you guys know I am not at all sponsored <coughs> um, by anybody on this channel at all, period. With that, I am not going to try to sell anybody anything. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you guys a look at these products. And you guys can base for yourself whether you like it or not. <coughs> but as I search around YouTube looking for anything on Quiet Cat, there's not hardly any videos at all out there, at least not that I'm finding. So I thought, why not put together my own video of Quiet Cat? Now, um, I got this bike from the local rep in southern Idaho. <clears throat> and the main reason I wanted to do this is um, I, most of you might know if you're regulars to my channel. If you're not, then you don't know. I love biking. I also love hunting. So <clears throat> I've thought about it many times before in the past about incorporating uh, mountain biking into hunting somehow or another. But in all honesty, most of the hills I'm doing are pretty steep hills. And by the time you throw on your gear and everything else, it's a lot of extra weight on that bike. And it's pretty exhausting to get the places you want to go. You, can you do it? Yeah. But um, I started thinking about it and said, well, I figured why not test out an e-bike for hunting and see how much better it does than a regular mountain bike for hunting. So anyways, with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through the bike. And then I'm going to splice to me actually out using the bike with my hunting gear and everything else and talking about how well it performed and stuff like that at the end of this video. So, and if you guys just want to skip to seeing how it does, then that's fine. Go ahead and just jump forward. I can't tell you where the minutes are yet as I haven't edited this yet. But um, if you want to check out both the bike, the details about the bike, and then see me hunting, please stick around and watch the rest of this video. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in and checking this out. But... Let's get into this. Let me show you about this bike. So, so again, as I said, this is the Quiet Cat, and it's the Predator. Um, so, first thing you got about this is, is, above all, let's just start out with the fact that it is kind of a regular bike. You have your shifter right here, um, and you have your shift indicator right here to tell you what gear you're in. Now, on the left side, you don't have a shifter. You have a throttle. So, we'll get to that in a minute. So reason being is because you get down here and you're only one gear up front. So this is a one by nine drivetrain. So you got nine in the back, one in the front, as I said. So essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to cut down the weight by keeping it a one by. Um, and I think I can understand the reason why they're only doing nine because it is a power assist. You don't have to have those big gears that you normally have on a bike to get up a hill because it's, you know, you got the battery, and here's the battery pack, and that's assisting you as you get up the hill. So, one by nine, this thing does really good with the gears. Um, you'll see in my video that I attach later that I actually just, for a while, use nothing but the pedal assist. And this does have a pedal assist in this, and what that means is as you pedal, uh, which I'm pedaling backwards because I don't want to pedal forward, um, but as you pedal, it automatically starts helping out. So you barely got to put any force into pedaling at all, and this thing just starts taking off. And all of that depends on what gear you're in, which we'll get into that in a minute as well, too. Um, and I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about on the motor as well, too, but here as well, too. Now, um, I stuck in one of the lowest gears. I think I was in two or three most of the ride that I was out. <clears throat> I didn't ever find myself needing more than that. And that's probably another reason why some of their newer models, if you look on the website, are 1x7s instead of 1x9s. So anyways, moving forward, that's the gears. Um, everything here is Shimano. You've got a Shimano shifter. Um, where does it say it? There it is. So come around the back side. It's Shimano. Um, as you come down here, you can see here this 2 also says Shimano. Um, and due to the fact that, like I said, it's a one by up front instead of having... Um, a front derailleur, you just have this chain assist bar right here to help to keep the chain from popping off. And the other cool thing is, is this is a narrow wide um, 
front chain ring up here. So with the narrow wide, you're most likely not going to drop the chain as it is, and then you throw on the chain assist. You know, I mean, you're, that chain's not going anywhere, so no matter how bumpy the ride gets. So one of the cool features of this is it also has hydraulic brakes. Um, and I'm not sh familiar with the manufacture of these brakes, I'm not going to lie. Um, it looks like it's some sort of um, bigger reservoir with a, a power assist type thing here. Um, and that's probably because of the extra weight um, of the bike itself, but it is a full hydraulic brake. Um, as you can see here, let me come around the other side. <coughs> but you do have the full hydraulic brake and it's got the big rotors. Um, I believe they're 200 millimeter rotor on both front and back to assist you with stopping properly. Um, and I'm going to tell you what, these brakes work and they work well and they're quiet. The only time I get any school out of them was after I took them through a small puddle of water and the brake pads got a little wet. I got a little squill, but so <clears throat> brakes are awesome. And what's even more awesome is you do have a front shock. And again, I can't tell you the shock manufacturer. I did not look up the specs of this bike online. I should, probably should have, um, but it is not labeled anywhere on the shock that I have been able to find as to who makes it. But I can tell you the shock works great. As you can see, just a little bit of travel in my dust line right there from the last time I went out and that's the shock full open with all my weight and everything else. So I probably could have let a little bit of air out of there, get a little bit more travel out of them. But in all honesty, I felt completely comfortable with the way it was, especially given all the gear. You know, it does have a lockout feature on top. <clears throat> so here is your full open all the way around your lockout. So each click just gives you a different, you know, um, amount of resistance in the shock. Now, it doesn't matter what bike I'm running, one of my regular bikes up here on the wall, or this e-bike, I just always leave my shocks open. It doesn't matter if I'm going uphill, down a road, it doesn't matter, it's just one of those things that you don't have to worry about, think about, and in all honesty, with an electronic bike, I think you've got enough to think about. Just leave the shock open, don't worry about it. Anyway, so, um, shock's really good. I had no issues with it at all. It felt plush, it felt comfortable. Um, it felt good. In fact, to me, it kind of felt a little bit more like a rock shock. Um, um, again, like I said, I'm not a rep. I'm not a sponsor or anything like that. So, um, you know, I'll, you guys check it out for yourself. Plus, I don't think they sell this model anymore with this fork. I think they updated it this year. So, anyways, <clears throat> moving on to what I do know is these are Kenda tires. Kenda um, makes some amazing tires. And... I'm not going to lie, these are some of the most amazing tires I've been on. <clears throat> it doesn't look like much in the tread, it looks kind of spaced out, but I think that was perfect. You'll see in my video later that I end up rolling through um, snow, I went through some puddles, um, I went up some steep rocks, loose rocks, shale rock, and not once did I feel like I was going to lose traction with these tires. These tires held true and they just went everywhere. So I love these tires. Um, now I do keep the air pressure in them just a little high, mainly because of my weight, which I'm 235 pounds, plus my backpack, uh, my rifle, and everything else, you know, all the water I was carrying, it did add up. Um, so one of the other cool things, so those are your, your basic bike components that we can talk about. You've got, you know, your seat um, or saddle, should I say. You've got your saddle here with your seat adjustment, um, quick release. Um, I went out without any padded shorts on, just my regular hunting clothes, and I did not feel like I was sore or hurting in any way. So this, this um, saddle is very comfortable. Um, this rack made a world of difference for me. I was able to strap my gear down with bungee cords. So I put my backpack here with all the water and food and everything else in it. Um, I put my spotting scope. And then once the day got warmer and I started stripping clothes down, I put the clothes on top of it as well too. So this helped out a lot. Um, it made it amazing. Um, anyways, so let's get into the electronics on the bike. So as you can see, you got a little switch over here on the side. This right here is your throttle. And this right here is the computer, so you got your power button, um, you have a plus and minus here, and then you have a light and an information. 
So we're just going to hold that power button down just for a second, and it goes and turns the computer on for you. Um, the computer is pretty basic, so like I said, as you have a plus and minus, that controls your gear, which you can see right there is in one. So if I hit up two, hit up three, or go back down, and for what I was doing, slow climbing up the hill, I found three with the pedal assist worked best, and then if I ended up needing a little extra help giving that throttle, really huge uh, benefit. So I stuck with three. Um, so the lights button, I'm assuming, is for an option for a front light, which this, as you can see, does not have a front light. Um, for my situation where I was going out early morning, it was pitch black outside still, it would have been amazing to have a light on here. Um, I'm assuming it is an added on upgrade. Um, that you can add on. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, I just had a light that I clamped around the bars here and shined forward, and then I had a headlamp on my head, and those two seemed to do, but I would have loved to have gotten rid of that and just had the light that came on the bike using the battery off the bike instead of that, but either way, it worked just fine. Um, so this is really cool. Um, so you have your information here, um, and the information, as you can see on the screen, changes from your max, the max this bike has gone is 47.2 miles per hour. Um, the average speed on this bike is 5.3 miles per hour. So um, that's probably me going uphill most of the time pretty slow. Um, range so far, average range on this battery is 14 miles. Now, I myself, I never once actually drained the battery all the way down to zero. So I'm guessing that range might be skewed just a little bit if you're not actually draining all the way down to zero and recharging. <clears throat> and then you've got calories burned, so you can turn that on for every ride. It'll tell you how many calories you burn on your ride. And then you got your time um, that you've had the computer on. So we've had the computer on for two minutes now. Um, and then it's also got a clock up here, which I don't know why that clock has never really showed the right time. But um, like I said, is I don't own this bike. I'm not diving into it too far. I'm just using it as is. Um, then you get your tripometer. So this bike so far has 238.9 miles on it. So one of the things I wanted to talk about with that is <clears throat> with the mileage, if the computer is turned off, so we turn it off. There we go. So computer's off. You would think it wouldn't track the mileage, but it actually still does. So what I found myself doing is when I'd get to the top of where I wanted to hunt, I would hike around for quite a while. Um, I didn't just try, you know, shooting off the bike or anything like that. I'd actually drive the bike to where I wanted to hunt and then walk around. But when I got done, it's all downhill. So I'm like, well, just like I would in my quad or anything else, why turn it on to coast downhill when I could just put it in neutral, which in this case, just hop on and start riding. No reason to turn the computer on. But what I found <clears throat> is, it still tracked my mileage from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. I don't know that there's a way around that. You know, maybe if you were to pop the battery out, which I didn't try, that would work um, as you're not actually wearing and tearing on the actual electric motor or engine itself. You're just coasting downhill. So something to think about. Um, I don't really know too much more about this bike. Um, uh, this is the very first time I've ever been on an e-bike, used an e-bike. Um, and rode the e-bike and my main focus was to get out and hunt and have some fun not play around with the bike so I'm sure that there's some things I can miss or I did miss sorry um, and be f feel free to jump into the comment section down below and tell me if there's something you know about the bike that I missed um, feel free to ask me questions down below in the comment section um, I am not a rep or an expert about this bike in any means but I will do my best to answer you um, I will leave links down below in the description to the manufacturer for this bike, um, as well as information on how to get a hold of the rep here in southern Idaho. So if you guys are looking to um, test ride a Quiet Cat or even buy a Quiet Cat, he's your best bet. Um, he'll have uh, every answer for you um, as far as bike prices, financing, everything else like that. So. Um, and again, I'll leave that all at the end of the video. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to roll into that uh, video and show you some clips of me out using it um, in person. And we'll talk to you at the end again. See ya. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bassinamore Outdoors. I'm Justin. This is 
part two of hunting with an e-bike. As you can see, I've got the e-bike behind me. Um, I actually got out here a little earlier this morning and did some glassing and scoping around in my nice thick sweater, keep warm. But now the sun's starting to come up and I can actually get some decent quality footage for you guys. I thought I would get this going. Um, as you can see, I'm not alone out here. Um, there was another truck down the road with a quad and then this guy came out here with his razor. So um, I'll be out on the e-bike and I know exactly where I'm going. I've got a spot just a few miles up the road right here that is perfect for me. And the re main reason why I wanted to bring the e-bike is I can't get the truck up there. Um, if I had a razor or a quad, I could, but this e-bike is just as amazing as both of those. It climbs up the hill like nothing and gets me to where I need to be. And with that little rack on the back, if I were to get something, I can easily quarter them out with that. Um, or I have a little cart that I can attach to the back of it and help bring down some meat as well too. So anyways, let's get into this. I wanted to show you some things. All right, so first off, as you can see, this is a quat rack. Um, quat makes really good racks um, and they're heavy duty. And you can see it's just wide enough to fit the big old fat tires on this thing. So um, the only problem is, is that the tires are so big that um, the straps here that hold the tires down, they barely reach, they don't even go in. So I have to bungee them down. And the only reason why I bungee the front tire is because the road getting out here is pretty bumpy. If you're on regular asphalt driving around, this thing's fine, but as soon as you start getting on bumpy roads, you'll see that tire try to come out. So just to be safe, since it is an expensive, you know, e-bike, I uh, bungeed that down as well too. But hauling it this way is perfectly fine. And given that the bike is a little bit heavier, um, it does make it easier for loading and unlo unloading. Um, I have seen people that just get the pad over the rear um, tailgate and throw it up and over. But, you know, with how heavy this bike is, that's a kind of a chore. So I like this because what I can do is when I go to take it off, I just roll it right off of it onto the ground. And it goes pretty good. And same with putting it back on. I lift the back tire up onto that and then just push it back. Not bad at all. And it's not that I'm a winkling and I can't pick it up. I can. It just it makes things a lot easier for you, especially if you're on day four of a five day hunt. You start to get exhausted after all that hiking and stuff like that and just wears you out. So anyways, um, I'm going to get this thing unloaded, get myself into my camo and get packed up and we'll start heading up here to our spot. Okay, so we're going uphill here. You see just a nice little dirt road right now. But I do not have my thumb on the trigger, which is right here. So if I give it that gas, it just goes. But all I'm doing is pedaling. And you can see I'm going five miles an hour, six miles an hour. Um, this is what's called the pedal assist. When you start pedaling, the electric motor automatically kicks in and starts assisting you. So just helps you push up the hill that much further, that much faster, and you waste a little less battery than just sitting on the throttle the whole time. So, pretty simple so far. Um, I am finding that being in gear three, which you can see in the middle, which you adjust those right here on the side, up and down. But, um, sorry it's so bouncy guys, the road is rough, but um, gear three seems to be the right speed for me, where I can not only look, but I'm most quiet. I'm not too fast, I'm not too slow. So working for me all right i wanted to show you all i just came up this rock right here and i know it doesn't look that steep on the camera but trust me it is actually steep you can hear me out of breath just a little bit it's not bad but so bike handle like a champ up it um i would have recorded going up it but it was so bumpy and rocky you guys would have just gotten dizzy but anyways what i did is not only kept under my own pedal power but i gave it throttle as well too 
I stayed in that gear three and you could see the battery was actually at 86% at the bottom of the hill, 74 at the top. And it's a decent little climb. So not bad. Um, we still got a ways to go up to where I want to go up in there. But so far, like a champ. Oh crap, I wasn't even recording. <sighs> Jeez. I did a lot of talking. Anyways, I just went up this nasty, gnarly hill. And uh, I burnt my battery power from like 80% down to 56% going up that hill. I was in third speed like I was now. I was pedaling and on the throttle at the same time. And I got myself down to about a mile an hour. So, um, what you guys got to remember is when you're riding these bikes, it's like any other bike. You still have to pick a good line. You can't just ride through the rocky stuff. But these tires are amazing. They do wonders. As you can see, I'm getting into snow here. I've been riding in snow for a little bit back there. And they just, the grip on these tires handle well. Packed stuff, fresh snow, doesn't matter. And over those rocks, these are some amazing tires on this bike. I love these tires. Anyways, I'm just coming up in my spot, so I'm going to be quiet now. I'll talk to you in a minute. So here we are. I spent all morning out here. It's now afternoon. I'm actually pretty well exhausted from the last few days and normally that wouldn't get me down but Saturday is the last day for hunt as it closes Saturday night. My wife's only been able to go out and hunt three days so far so um, I promised her that we will go out Saturday in the area that she wants to hunt. There's a lot of hiking, a lot. So I need to get rested up the next two days, get some carbs in me. Get ready to go for that one. So what I'm actually probably gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna head back into town, grab a bite to eat. As you back on the bike, um, I have the bike turned off now. And this is a nice snowy rutted road. And of course, you know, it doesn't look near as steep as it is on camera, but um, in person, as can on, on camera as in person. Something like that, and uh, it's steeper and slick and snow. So I'm not gonna record as I go down this, but once I get to the bottom of this, I will tell you how it went. I am not gonna turn it on as it's all downhill and there's no reason to if we're just gonna coast with brakes on. So, all right, talk to you in a minute. Well, here we are back at the truck. I was all the way back up around that canyon up around that corner um, and from here it doesn't look like much but you know how mountains can be you're staring at it come around the corner and all of a sudden there's that big peak um, so yeah I coasted all the way back down never did turn it back on so yeah you don't waste any battery coming downhill with it just on coast like I said don't turn it on coast down you save your battery so I will ride up all the way up as far as I can, 5% battery. So um, let me pack everything up and then I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit more here about um, why a quiet cat. It's right in the name, quiet. This thing is battery powered. So even though you're carrying all the extra weight, which I don't know if you guys know or not, but when you come to mountain bike up a hill or anything like that, weight makes a difference. The lighter the bike, the lighter you are, the further and faster you're going to go. Well, because this is battery powered, it takes a lot of that out. You can throw on a bunch more weight. You can go further. You can last longer. You know, I mean, as a mountain bike coach myself, I start climbing a hill. I get to the top of the hill and I'm exhausted. With this, I get to the top of the hill and I'm not exhausted. I, I, I can still go and go and go. And I've taken this out three times now as a test, but um, as, as a test, I, I've taken it through puddles of water. Um, you know, Tim, you might not love this part. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's kind of dirty down here and it's kind of muddy. And I did, I took it through a couple puddles. Um, I did do my research beforehand and find out that this is waterproof enough to go to the puddles. 
Now, did I completely drench this thing in water? No, no. I went in water um, deep enough that it came to essentially the bottom of the frame right here. Um, you know, is that going to get in the motor? Most likely not. The motor is sealed with gaskets and bolts and stuff like that to keep it from getting wet and destroyed. Um, they don't build these bikes on the hopes that you'll never take it off-road. They build these bikes to take them off-road. So, with that said, um, I have climbed up big rocks. I've gone through decent-sized puddles of water with it and everything else, and this thing has not stopped yet. Um, the only thing that would stop you is if the battery dies. And, you know, going uphill does use a bit of battery. Um, so these things are rated with this battery about 20 miles. Um, but that's going to be level ground. That's going to be flat. It'll go 20 miles, you know, um, maybe even more, I bet you, um, if you're on flat level ground. But if you're doing any sort of incline, you start to take away the battery life. When you're doing a straight uphill through rocks and little streams and stuff like that, like I'm doing with it, it's not going to last that long. I mean, I think I went five miles and was at 20% battery life after five miles. But in all actuality, that's amazing because... The whole point of the quiet cat is you're not taking it from your house to your hunting spot. The point of the quiet cat is you're taking your personal vehicle and you're driving out as far as you personal as you are comfortable with it, which is what I have done. Then at that point, you're taking this off the truck and then riding out to your favorite hunting spot. Um, taking it down the roads that you don't want to take your nice truck, taking it down the roads that your truck can't go, things like that. So that's why a quiet cat is this thing is quiet. It'll get you uphill. And if you do get into a group of deers while going there, you're not going to scare them off because it's quiet enough. And especially coming downhill as you're coasting, you're not going to scare them off. So is this thing worth the money? Yeah, absolutely. It's a year round bike. It's got the fat tires on it. That'll go just about anywhere. You know, you've got the nice battery on it. That'll take you plenty of miles up into your favorite hunting spot. It has a um, cart that attaches on the back of it that will carry up to 300 pounds. So if you do get something, just, t you know, if you're going out, take the cart with you. I didn't take it with me because it wasn't put together. And I didn't want to put it together, in all honesty. Um, if I'd got something, I would have put it together and put it on there and showed you how to get it out. But um, I didn't, so we didn't do it. But if you wanted to take that cart uphill with you, carry your gear in the cart. Well, you're just on the bike by yourself, no rifle over your shoulder, rifle in the cart, whatever, you know, I mean, by all means do it. So would I recommend this? Yes, I would. Um, so with that said, um, the reason why I have this, I did not buy this bike. No, I rented this bike so that I can check it out and see if it's going to do what I want it to do. And guess what? It did exactly what I wanted it to do. So with that said, um, the rep, his name, and I'll put it on screen as well too. His name is Tim Green. He is the rep for Southern Idaho. Um, contact the number under his name if you're interested, and he'll give you all the details as to how much they cost. There's different models, things like that, and um, how to get a hold of one, and he'll take care of you guys. So um, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so. And do me a favor, leave me any comments in the video you guys want. Um, I know this is not giving you everything you guys probably want to see, especially a lot of you avid hunters who are out here a lot. You probably want to see just a little bit more. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I am more focused on hunting than I am making a video about this. And I didn't bring any of my video gear, just my cell phone. So, um, but definitely get in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you watching the video and I appreciate your feedback. Have a great day.